Okay, we're going to go through some basic ways to use uh, Behave Plus. This is one of the programs you need to do one of the exercises for Field Station. I know some of you, a number of you, have had uh, 337, so we've talked about this before. But uh, for some of the other ones, you have not had this background. Um, Fuel loading is a standardized method. We're going to have a uh, video clip available that we recorded that's going to cover your, uh, how we sample material in the field. Uh, but what we want to do is talk about how do we then use this software program to, to make it work. First of all, one of the things you have to keep in mind is that we're talking about the size of fuels, and that's one of the things we're quantifying in the field. But also, it's important to keep in mind well, this is exactly what we're also assessing in Behave Plus. For those who've had fire, you remember we had four different uh, fuel sizes uh, less than a quarter inch, quarter inch to one inch, one to three inches, three to eight inches in diameter. And these size classes are just average numbers that give us basically the same kind of relationship of how long it takes for that diameter to reach equilibrium with the environment. So uh, things that are less than quarter inches are basically reflecting the, the fuel moisture is reflecting the environmental conditions that were one hour earlier and 10 hours, 10 hours, 100, 100,000. Uh, you may also recall that we talk about uh, fuel sticks as a way to measure fuel moisture. Uh, here's an example of one uh, and these are what we call the 10 hour fuels that we're using here uh, and basically just remind you one way to measure fuel moisture is you put this out there this thing weighs dry uh, even with the staples and the hook 100 grams and so you can put this out weigh it a day or so and then uh, you're the weight and so 110 grams would be 10 percent moisture content but what we're doing for this exercise is calculating fuel loading and then taking this data and not only do an uh, estimation of how to make that into uh, moisture, I mean uh, fuel loads that are on the ground, but we're also, the other part of this exercise deals with uh, using the common software program that we have for estimating or predicting or, uh, fuel of fire behavior. And it's called Behave Plus. So if, uh, on all the computers down, downstairs in the management plan room, and all of those in the computer room upstairs, then you will be asked to, to go ahead and download this free software that's part of the federal, that's produced by the federal government, is Behave Plus. It has a little bit of an emblem here, you can see. Uh, and so you, uh, any computer, you click it and you bring that up. And here is Behave Plus, the entry uh, level. Now, these computer, this computer program is not an actual predictor. It's an estimator. Basically, there's another way to look at this as the idea of how fires would behave. It's what we call a stylized or an average model. Fires may behave a little bit less, a little bit more than what you numbers that you get produced here. So this is a pretty standard method. When you go in, the first time you enter this, you'll need to go to uh, Configure, Module Selection, and then under Surface Fire Spread, that's all we're doing for this class. You can do Crown Fire, Size of the Point Source Fire, Containment, Spotting Distance, you can do a lot with this software program. For this exercise, we are just looking at Surface Fire Spread. Click on the option. And you'll notice that surface rate of spread, how far that'll go in distance, and flame length, think height basically, are our default measures, the outputs that they have. You should also come in and click fire run intensity. This is the energy that's released. This can tell you a little bit more than just the other two numbers. So you always click on that, hit OK. Hit OK again, and now you're ready to go. We're going to use English units. You can convert this to, to metric, but uh, we're not going to go ahead and do that. 
If you work your way down, you'll see rows here with input and description. You'll see fuel vegetation, uh, surface understory, the fuel model. I'll talk about that again. Then the uh, uh, some moisture contents, weather and terrain, and some notes that you can get. So the output variables, will, as you see, are going to be the surface rate of spread. They're going to use change per hour. Fire line intensity, the old new English units, BTUs for feet per second, and flame length, uh, how many feet. So, for those who were in 337, we may recall in the early 70s, we, they created two separate kinds of fire behavior software program. One was based in the south and one was based in the Rocky Mountains. One in the south was based on estimating uh, fire danger and giving it a rating number. So we're not talking about that. The other one, uh, and the reason why we use the other one more, is that they considered the model out of the Missoula Fire Lab as being the first step in developing predictive computer software programs. And Behave Plus is that program. So what happened is that you went from uh, paper copies. When I was an undergraduate student, you had booklets and you would take the data, process it, uh, two axes, two variables, get a new variable, turn the page, do another one. It was fairly tedious and by the time you got done, the fire overran you. Then when I became a grad student, they first started coming out with uh, Behave. It originally was uh, designed to be only on a special a Hewlett Packard calculator and you would enter the stuff in, very basic, and it would give you one output line at a time. And then you'd have to, so basically like a, a calculator with paper, so you just keep counting that off and, and put those on there. Then they went to a mainframe computer system, which is basically you pay a license in every computer that can have that. Then they went to a PC version. And then, uh, then they've upgraded from Behave to Behave. Plus. That modeling system that was developed in the early 70s worked on a try to quantify it and package these things into categories that are very easy to work with. In the case of the uh, one coming out of Missoula, the Fire Lab, they originally started, they took everything in the United States and dumped it into 13 groups. Well, then they found out that that was way too simplistic. And, and so you can work off, off of that. But anyway, I'll show you how you can play with that in the middle. Um, one way to go out in the field and get an idea of what you have as a fuel model before you get really experienced on that is use something like a photo guide. And so you will, you will pretend through this virtual lab exercise to have done that. And uh, Look, photo guys are exactly what they sound like. They got groupings and they have photos, and this is based on surface fuels, not canopy fires or anything like that. And so you can turn around, and, and uh, we've got this very nice uh, the bottom of this one page where it's talking about longleaf pine in a, a grassy understory, kind of like what we might see where we're going to be doing this lab, getting the data from. Uh, they call it fuel model two. Okay. So you're going to enter that data. So you, if you put two in here, and then click on any of the other rows, anything that lights up in white and not blue anymore is a variable that you are going to have to enter. Now, as I said, there's a lot now. If you click on this, you can see this long range of variables. They went from 13 with all kinds of them. So they got this in there. And so two is timber, grass, and understory. Or you can do tall grass, or you can do chaparral. I'll show you an example of that. So we're going to keep this and go with two. Then the variables that you have here is one hour moisture, 10 hour moisture, 100 hours, live herbaceous moisture, uh, wind speed, and wind mid flame and then slope, slope steepness. Let's just go ahead and start at the bottom. Let's just go ahead and put in a one. Let's just have a little bit of slope. It doesn't really matter. There's not a whole lot of slope in a lot of these texts. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, remember we use the A+, 
us is that the relationship between the 1, 10, and 100 hour fuels is more or less a relationship with about 2 to 3 percent differences on moisture. Is that the smaller will generally be drier than the large, larger materials. It takes longer for the moisture to leave with larger materials. So let's say we go with one hour moisture, and they'll even tell you if you click on this information here, one to 60 percent. Well, let's keep in mind that most of the time we're very you can't get a fire to go at 60 percent. So let's just say we're going to go with oh, 12 percent moisture, which means for 10 hours you should be doing oh, I don't know, 14. And then maybe let's go with 18 for 100 hour moisture. My herbaceous moisture, you'll see the range is 30 to 300 percent. It's in relationship to total dry, so if it's alive, it has moisture in it. Let's just say that we have, oh, I don't know, 45 percent live moisture in here. <coughs> now, the last variable that you have to put in here is mid flame wind speed. This is not wind speed as, hopefully not for a surface fire, 20 feet up. This is, the, this is the actual wind that is halfway up the flint flame length, okay? That is important because that is the, that is the wind that's taking, that's forcing the, a fire, the flame of a fire to be, rather than straight up, is contributing to it being tilted. And this is where the fire can start spreading and heat preheating some of the other material. So uh, the range here is, you know, nothing to 40 miles an hour. You, by state law, you are limited to the highest you can go on that. But let's say we're just going to try to go with about, oh, I don't know, seven miles an hour. Okay. So there's your data. You go to calculate. And it tells you under those conditions you just did, that fire would, would grow at 48.7 chains per hour, you can multiply by 66 to get that. The energy is pretty low, and the flame length is 6.4 feet. Think about this in those areas that you saw where we were out we captured this at Boykin, where the trees are fairly tall. Not going to be a problem. Now visualize what happens if you had a 12-year-old Loblaw pine plantation. Now you have a problem. So, so this is how you basically work this. And what you're going to do is do this multiple times, going back, that's what that arrow is, and changing this. And we're going to keep everything the same and go to 14 mile an hour mid flame speed. And you calculate, look what happened to not so much the surface rate of spread, but look at the energy, more oxygen is speeding that flame, and your flame length went from 7 to what happens if we drop this down to 30? Again, not a whole lot of change from that. But let's say what would we do if we, instead of using our model that we have here for um, East Texas around Boykin, we make it like it's Southern California chaparral. Unity. I forgot, different model. You don't need live herbaceous moisture anymore. I just leave that number there or you can take it out. You need live woody because chaparral is a shrub species and you got 30 distances. Let's say we're still, let's make 30 here just to see what will happen. So the rate of spread is 518 chains per hour. Uh, the flame lengths are almost 48 feet in length and a lot of energy, 25,000 BTUs per second. That's why Southern California burns the way it does. So what I'm going to want you to do for this exercise, now that you see how to do this, make sure you, you have to download it in computers. You can't use it on your phone, it's got to be a desktop or a laptop, is that you are going to give me a parameter, you'll see this in the of what, how you would burn the area under the conditions that we gave you. Play around with the moisture contents a little bit. 
But I want a cyborg. What is the range of 1, 10, and 100 hour moistures that you would let you let it burn under? Uh, what would be the live herbaceous moisture? What happens if we change this to a slash field? Heavy slash. Uh, you've logged it, let the stuff scatter. Uh, still got that. What happens here? Pretty benign. It doesn't matter on the flame lights because you don't have anything living above it. So there's ways you can visualize this. You, the better you can learn to do this now, the better you'll be able to do management plans when you get to that because you will have some exercises in that. And for those fire majors, you will have to do this as well. So, so this is how you use Behave Plus. It's a fairly simple program. All you're going to be doing is surface tool behavior. You are not doing anything else in spotting or anything of the other variables.